Okay, this is part two of our discussion on lambda functions. <clears throat> Excuse me. And in this video, I want to talk about um, the capture clause. So Brian Malloy here on lambda functions and capture clauses. So really, a bit of the best, well, one of, a very good reference, let me just say, is CPP reference lambda functions page. And it describes here the some interesting aspects of capture functions. So uh, capture clauses, I mean. So what it says is that what it is. Then it says a lambda expression can use a variable without capturing it if it is non-local or has static um, storage allocation. Is a reference that has been initialized as a constant expression um, and a few other uh, uh, rules. So um, let's go ahead and try to play with that. So I have here a little example to kind of try to demonstrate all of this. And what I have here is a, a, a global variable x um, has value 7, a local variable y, 99, a constant expression z um, has value 17, and then a little fun a lambda function called capture. So all I want to do now is play around with capture clauses. And if you read CPP reference, it says if it's non-local, you don't have to capture it. So let me go ahead and compile this. Uh, it's all, let me just do a make clean and show you that it compiles. There are some warnings because we're not using Y and Z. But if we run it, we get 7, which is the value of X. So I don't need to capture X because it's not local. Um, nor, nor do I need to capture uh, Z because it's a constant expression. So I can come over here and compile this and run it and I get the value of z there. However, if I try to access y, which is a local variable, it's going to tell me I have to capture. Let's see the error message. y is not captured, so pretty good. So what I need to do then is uh, capture y and now we can uh, compile it and run it and we get um, Excuse me, 99. Okay, so that's it in a nutshell. If I want to capture a, a local variable, I, I mean, if I want to use a local variable in my lambda function body, then I have to capture it in the capture clause. Um, not a very strong motivation for um, capture clauses, I guess you would say, but nevertheless, it, it exposes what capture clauses can do. Um, there are also a couple of wild cards you can use. I don't know if I, I think I saved it here. If you come down here, um, there, you, there are some wild cards. I think it's equal and star or equal and ampersand maybe. Ampersand is for reference. Let me see if I can find it. Um, I'm not finding it, but there's a use of it. Ampersand, I believe, captures all variables as reference. Um, and equal, I think, captures them by value. I don't use the wild cards. I usually try to be specific. I mean, why write a lambda function if you're going to capture everything? Uh, but there is, there are some valuable uses to it, and one of them is in writing recursive functions. So let's write the old standard uh, recursive function um, fact, factorial. Let's write a factorial. So it sounds easy, but we're going to have to first um, declare the function. So if we want, let me just show you what I mean. So how would we write fact? So we write fact equals, and let's suppose we don't use a capture clause. I mean, you might want to try something like this. Um, it's not going to work, but I just thought I'd show it to you. Okay, and let's call fact of 5. We want to find 5 factorial. And you might think, well, all I have to do is I've got x. Um, all I have to do is say um, if x equals 1, then return x, else return x times fact of x minus 1. That seems about right, doesn't it? And you think that might work, but here's the problem. We're using fact. We're using the name. So we have a name here, fact. We're using that name in here. And, and we're, we're declaring it here, and so the compiler is not going to be able to deduce what that is. So what we really have to do is, um, let's see, we have to do, this, do it this way. We have to say, um, we can't use auto, unfortunately. We have to say std colon colon, oh, I always do this wrong function, and we're going to return an int, and we're going to pass in an int, and I want angle brackets here. 
and that's my function fact. And then I say fact is equal to, and I have to capture it by reference, and now my little program, I believe, will work. Okay, so if we've, we get 120. Okay, so let me just explain what I've done. I've written a recursive function, a lambda, a lambda function that's recursive to, produce, to compute the standard factorial, I mean, I mean everybody's go-to recursive function. But I wanted to demonstrate some things, namely that since I'm using this name fact in the function body, the lambda function body, then I have to capture it in the capture clause, but, but I can't declare it and then use it in the capture clause. So what I have to do is first declare it. And to declare it, I can't use auto. If I put auto up here, let me just show you what I mean. If I put auto up here, it's going to say it can't deduce, the compiler can't deduce what auto is. I mean, that just doesn't make, even make sense, does it? I mean, you know, even even uh, Python couldn't couldn't deduce uh, what auto was. So what I have to do is tell the, the C++ compiler that fact is a name and that that name is a lambda function that returns an int and accepts an int as a parameter. So this is a case where, you know, we, we would like to always use auto. Auto is a nice, easy way out in a certain sense. This is one of those situations where you cannot use auto. You have to first declare a fact so that you can then use that name um, in the body of the function, and I have to capture it by reference, by the way. If I try to capture it by value, um, I'm not going to be able to make assignments so um, to, to return values. So it has to be captured by reference. So in a, in, a, in a nutshell, that's capture clauses. Capture clauses are used to capture variables. You don't need anything in a capture clause if it's non-local. If it's local, you've got to capture it. And sometimes we can't use auto. I guess that's the point of all this. So lambda functions can be fun. I think the next thing to do would be to write a whole bunch of them. You can hear my clock chiming, so I guess it's time to terminate this, this video. Hey, happy programming. Brian Malloy, over and out.